Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs of all ages, happy freaking Monday. Small Business Mornings is on the air. I'm your host, Pat Miller, the Idea Coach. So glad that you're tuned in this morning, and I am ready to make this a fantastic week, and you're exactly right, Gecko. Thanks for tuning in on the YouTubes. Now, this show is designed and built for small business owners just like you that are waking up on a Monday morning and deciding, you know what? I need to grow my business and I got to get in the mood to do so. So our daily check-in, our daily conversation is my way that we can work together and live out our phrase, don't grow it alone. On today's show, we've got the news of the day. We got big free money. We've got old and new when it comes to technology. We have our meme of the day, which is hilarious and completely misguided. We've got a bunch of different announcements, some in-person networking events, uh, our Idea Slamathon that's coming up on August 30th. We're going to talk about that. I'm going out to do a keynote or at least a VIP presentation that I haven't talked about yet. We'll talk about that on the show this morning. And of course, uh, we will do our question of the day. And our question of the day is something I'm a little bit embarrassed to talk about because I was really hot on something and then I kind of just lost my love for it. Our question of the day is, are you using AI in your business? Or did you check it out and realize, eh, it's really not working for me just yet? If you are using it, I want to talk about what are you using it for? So we will do our question of the day a little bit later in the show. Now, the kids that help me grow this thing tell me you should like and subscribe, put the thumbs up on the mark because the algorithms like that. So if you're watching this platform on YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, your mom's toaster, your pair of shoes, your dog's collar, wherever you're seeing it, like it and subscribe and all of those good sorts of things. And make sure you come in and say good morning, like our friend Teresa just did. Howdy, Teresa. Okay, so before we get into the news, and before we do all that beeswax, how about, how about we just talk about the weekend? What was the best thing you did this weekend? Because the news will be there. The question of the day is going to be there. Let's just have a conversation. Hi, how's your coffee? good. So what would you do this weekend? Anything fun? Put in the comments the best thing you did this morning or this weekend. And uh, good morning to the data magician, Lynn Karazi. So what is the best thing you did this weekend? Now, I had a really great thing. I had a very special thing over the weekend. And if we're connected on social media, you know what that special thing is. The thing that I love more than anything in life. I got to remind myself how much I love it and spend some time with it over the weekend. The best thing that happened to me this weekend, and I get choked up when I talk about it because I just love it so much. I broke 80 on the golf course. I mean, oh, I, I had my 23 year wedding anniversary too, but I, I broke 80 on the golf course. <laughs> I can feel my lovely wife, Abby, upstairs throwing things at me. So let me explain, okay? So yes, the best thing that happened this weekend is I celebrated 23 years with my loving wife, Abby. Uh, we had our wedding anniversary over the weekend. And we enjoyed spending time together. And it kind of hit me this weekend that this was our first, maybe not our first, but maybe our strongest contentiversary. Meaning, we sat around all weekend thinking about our life, and thank you all for the congratulations. I really appreciate that. Um, we sat around all weekend just reflecting on everything that's going on. And a lot of the drama is behind us. And if you would have told us on our wedding day, listen, 23 years from now, you won't be wealthy. However, you'll be happy. You'll still be in love. You'll be healthy. You'll have two beautiful children that are going on to do great things. And you'll have enough money to get by. Would you take that? Damn right I would. Damn right I would. And the best part about my relationship with Abby, and I hope you have this in your marriage or your relationship as well, is that 
we're always happy. We're always together. And she's my favorite person. She's my favorite person. She's my best friend. So happy anniversary, Abs. I love you. And uh, here's to 23 more. Now back to the best thing that happened to me over this weekend. I broke 80 on the golf course. Of course, I'm teasing, but I did break 80. This is a thing. So when I was in high school, I used to know what I was doing on the golf course and breaking 80 was no big deal. But since high school, I had not played a legitimate round where I broke 80 and I did it over the weekend. Birdied the last two holes. Thank you very much. So daddy had it going on, shot a 78. So I felt really good about that. Okay. So I hope you're sharing in the comments what you did over the weekend. Teresa went to the Renaissance Fest. Sure. Gecko uh, went to granddaughter's baptism. Oh, how happy is that? And uh, yes, thank you all for the um, happy well wishes for our anniversary. It really was something special. Okay. So let's talk about the news and the stuff that you came here for, because you probably didn't come here to talk about my golf game. Although, believe me, I would love to tell you all about it because I really did play well over the weekend. So let's start here with this positivity in the news. This is the positive story of the day. You're all a bunch of losers. Yes, we're all losers. Nobody won the Mega Millions jackpot over the weekend. A couple of people came close. Could you imagine coming close? Like they matched all the things, but not the Mega Millions ball. Like they got all the numbers, but the bonus. They won $2 million bucks, which is pretty amazing. But could you imagine how mad you'd be at $2 million if you came that close to winning a billion? Ooh. So the next drawing is Tuesday, $1.55 billion, billion, billion dollars. The other thing is we found some free money. Uh, Teresa and a couple others sent to me uh, this month's mailer from the WEDC. They've got some small business grants that are out there. So if you're looking for some money to help grow your business, there are five different grants in this load of mailers, which is pretty awesome. Uh, PayPal's got 10 grand, DoorDash has got 10 grand. There's some other opportunities in there. So if you like free money, and who don't, nab that link and you can go figure out what's available for you uh, inside this month's load of free money. If you're just tuning in, this is Small Business Mornings. It's a new daily show for small business owners where we get together and live out the Don't Grow It Alone mission. We tell a few jokes. We go through the news. We have a thought-provoking conversation. We drink some coffee. Uh, and then when we're done, we go small business together. Okay, so let's do old and new. So in the news this morning, there's old and there's new. Let's do the new part first. The rumors are starting to fly around the new iPhone that's coming out in September. So sometime in September, it's going to get released. And the rumors are becoming uh, more available over uh, the different chat sites. So like I said on Friday, I scour the web to get you the best information that I can. And this morning, I was casually reading MacRumors.com, as I do every day, to prepare for this show. And MacRumors.com tells me that the new iPhone will have more storage. Woo! Up to two terabytes for stuff you probably should have deleted anyway. And here's another feature. It'll be more expensive. Woo! So it was $9.99. Now it's going to be $10.99 at launch, which is great. And that's not the fancy version. The fancy version will be even better, uh, more expensive rather. And the other thing that they're talking about is, oh, the camera is going to get better. So I, who is using the camera that needs it to be better? Have you sat around with this and thought, man, I can't wait till this camera gets better. Do you know how much better my, when I can, when I can like take better pictures, my life is going to change. So yeah, better camera, more storage, more expensive iPhone 15. That's their marketing plan for September. Uh, but if you think about when people replace their iPhone, the marketing plan should be Battery kind of stinks. Screen is cracked. Might as well iPhone. Isn't that about when you think about upgrading your phone anymore? 
Battery kind of stinks. Oh, my screen is cracked. Eh. Eh. It should be that uh, emojicon. Eh. iPhone 15. Because if you remember um, when the iPhones were going from, hey, there's a thing called an iPhone, to, oh my God, the iPhone. Do you remember what those incremental jumps were like? When it started doing things you couldn't believe, like, oh my God, I can do this now. It was wild. And now it's like, eh, another megapixel. I can't even tell you what a megapixel is, but there's a lot of them. And when there's a lot of them, meh, might as well iPhone. And yeah, Stephanie is so right. I'm still on the iPhone 10. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. So yes, and Teresa, you're right. How are they getting better? They're just getting newer. So might as well iPhone happening in September. Uh, you're welcome. So here's the other thing. That's the new. Let's talk about the old. And this is going to make you feel old. Back in the age of wonder, when things were exploding with technology, do you remember getting the iPod? The original iPod. Good morning, Susie. Good to see you. Patty, thanks for checking in. The original iPod. Like the white one with the wheel. Remember how cool the wheel was? I remember showing people, look, it's a wheel. Wow. The original iPod. It was a wonder of technology. Because I remember, because I'm a music guy, I was already all into Napster and all the other streaming. Napster, there's a word you didn't expect to hear this morning, right? Napster. I was doing all of that and downloading. I had hard drives and hard drives and hard drives full of music. And then the iPhone came and then you could go into their walled garden and buy the music again. But you could get music on your iPhone. And it was absolutely liberating where you had the chance to take your music with you wherever you wanted. And it was CD quality. Remember that phrase? CD quality. It was just magic. Take it anywhere you want it. Anyway, iPhone was a thing in a way that the new iPhone or iPod was a thing and the way the new iPhone 15 is not a thing. Bigger battery. All your music you ever wanted crystal clear forever. It was amazing. Well, the reason why we should feel old is that someone bought an iPod in 2001 and never opened it. And they just auctioned it. Care to guess how much that went for? An unopened iPod in its protective, sealed for your protection, right? Care to guess how much that went for? Think about it. It went for $29,000. $29,000. Does that seem high to you? Yeah, right? 10K? That sounds about right, Susie. $29,000. And Susie said she never had an iPod. Okay, that's that's interesting. Although uh, there were the other ones. Remember the Zune? Remember the Microsoft Zune? That piece of crap? That thing was really bad. Anyway, I found it curious that an iPod that was still sealed went for 30 grand, but just reflecting back on that time of wonder and that moment where I could just put on my headphones and the headphones were terrible. We've really come a long way with headphones, but back then it was, it was pretty amazing. Okay. Let's, uh, go to the meme of the day. Shall we do the meme of the day? The meme of the day I thought was really funny because the meme of the day, um, well, you have to see it. <laughs> and it kind of ties in to my AI question that I'm going to ask you in just a little bit. What are you using AI for? And is it making a business uh, difference in your business? But here's your meme of the day. Got an email, and I got to read it on this screen because it's bigger. Hey there, it's Blah from Blah reaching out to you with an exciting opportunity. We've been admiring your profile and can't help but notice your incredible sense of style and fashion. What? We think you'd be a perfect fit for our glasses store. Oh, okay. 
Maybe. That's why we're reaching out to you. They want to do a content collaboration. In other words, will you sling our stuff? As soon as I saw them say, uh, we admire your sense of style and fashion, I knew they were lying. I mean, come on. I'm a tall drink of water, right? Got it going on. Devastatingly handsome. But fashion is not one of my strong suits. We know this. So that is your meme of the day. And then we can't wait to hear from you and discuss the possibilities. Love face. Is that love face? Love face. Let's make magic happen with my glasses thing. <laughs> love face. No, no, I don't think so. Yes, Gek, that's right. Let's make magic happen. Love face. Anyway, that's the meme of the day. Because that made me laugh. I'm laying in bed this morning. and I'm. I, so do you do this where you get up, but you don't get up? Like I wake up and the first thing I do is grab the phone, grab the phone. And then I do the initial death scroll of the day. Very first thing. Okay, what the hell happened while I was sleeping? And I'm always just kind of assuming that it's going to be something awful. An explosion in some place you've never been kills 81. Like, that's the type of stuff you wake up to on your phone when you wake up. And I'm not looking forward to that, but it's what I expect. Because I figure, what if I could start my day in a bad mood every day? What if I could get up every day and just make sure that I know as soon as my feet hit the floor, it's an awful place for my life. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> that's, that's what I do every day. So <laughs> I'm doing my death scroll in the morning and I saw that and I'm just like, oh my God. So clearly they have no, they're selling glasses, but they have no eyes. Clearly, if I'm their vision of fashion. So I thought that was a Okay, let's do our question of the day, shall we? And by the way, I've got a few announcements we're going to do a little bit later in the show. I'm going to do a VIP keynote speech in September. I want to invite you to. Also, we have a networking event this week, this Thursday night in person, where I'm going to put on real pants and show up someplace in person, which is unusual because I don't do that very often. And it's free, and I want to invite you to that. Plus, we're going to make sure you know all about our Idea Slamathon on Thursday, August 30th, because this show, we are going to raise a big pile of money for Islands of Brilliance, and you get to watch while I get completely exhausted and slap happy live on camera. For those of you that loved last week when I fought with my computer, I had another person tell me over the weekend, I watched your show, and the best part was when you fought with your computer. Maybe I should just beat the crap out of technology on this show, and people would think it's great. Anyway, if you like that version of me, completely exasperated and exhausted, the Idea Slamathon is for you. We will talk about that in a minute. But our question of the day is, are you using AI in your small business? Are you using it today? As you go through your stuff today, will you use AI in your small business? And I ask because AI came onto the scene in first quarter of 2023 in a big deal. Chat GPT became a household name. And being a community leader and being someone that's in charge of helping small business owners grow, I thought, hey, here's a robot that can help someone that doesn't have a team grow their business faster. So I should probably get up to speed on this and make sure that I'm sharing what I can learn with the folks in our community. So the people in the Idea Collective are uh, up to speed on it because I did a five-day interactive course uh, for chat GPT and AI because I wanted people to know what's going on. And you can still go in and take that course if you're a new community member or if you're a member of the community and haven't taken it yet. We talk about how to use it and how to drive it and what makes it work so you can get the most out of it. But I haven't made it a habit. And that's the realization I had this morning is all of this is there and it still hasn't worked its way into my daily use. So Wendy, thank you for sharing that you use it. I want to know what you're using it for. Can you share that? Let's see. Gek says, um, oops, where's Gek? There you are, Gek. 
uh, we are using AI for content creation and we're in a big multi-product launch and using AI to help guide us. Okay, uh, get, go on with that. I, I want to know what you're doing. And if you're willing to do it, to do a no camera call in, I would love to hear from you um, what exactly you're using it for. Or I know that Stephanie is using it a little bit and some others are using it as well. But if you click the link, you can call into the show and you don't have to turn your camera on. I'm just curious, what are you using it for? Because I know it can be valuable, but I haven't found the use case. So Patty shares a good one product descriptions. So Patty does jewelry and the product, the, the uh, AI and chat GPT, I bet are helping her describe uh, the jewelry. Like you can only write, this is a shiny, pretty ring so many times before you could use some professional help. Stephanie's saying uh, occasionally, not today, but when I need content or text and a client doesn't have a budget for a copywriter, I use jasper.com. Jasper's a really good tool for sure. Okay, Gek is back. Okay, great. Uh, product launch. AI. Do you say it like Captain Picard on the Star Trek? AI, give me 10 steps to do a product launch. Engage. Like, do you do that? I, I find myself doing that. Then asking AI to define each step. And it's really good at that, isn't it? To help you think through a process or a pile of steps. Yeah, that's really good. So you don't miss a step. Thank you for sharing that, Gek. Uh, and Wendy is... Idea generation. I'll ask it to list 10 suggestions to name something using certain keywords. That's true. It's really good for naming things. And it's really good for helping you think through a process. And uh, yes, Wendy, great use for AI to give you product descriptions. That was for Patty for sure. Uh, and let's see here. We've got another LinkedIn user. AI generates tremendous devotions and reflections that can be topical or verse related. Now that's interesting. So I assume, uh, LinkedIn user, what you mean is biblical, that it helps you with devotions and reflections from the Bible. I think that's what you mean here by devotions and reflections, not the most religious guy on the planet. Uh, but that's really good. It can help you figure out ways to do it. So it sounds like Jasper, Chat GPT, some of these text based things are helping you. And we're all, we are all using AI when it comes to tools. So when you talk to Siri, when you talk to Alexa, when you use uh, transcription tools, when you use Google Maps, all that kind of stuff, AI is definitely helping for sure. Um, but these kinds of purposeful, uh, programs are out there. And yes, Devos and Reflections. Can we talk about Devo for a second? I love Devo. You know, I just rediscovered Devo. I know you mean, you know, devotions, but I'm talking about the 80s band, Devo. Like Devo, when you're not in a good mood and you put on Devo like loud, it's so simplistic and rhythmic and weird it just like resets my brain chemistry. So I know we're not talking about God stuff when I talk about Devo the band, but dang it, Devo the band. They, they serve a really important role in my playlist for sure. All right. These are all great ideas. Wendy just used it. Just used it to create a bio for a client. We tweeted it, but it got us close to what she, or tweaked it. I think that's what you meant. Got it close to what she needed. Yeah, it can help with that kind of stuff too. This is a great conversation on AI because I haven't found the place where I'm using it every single day. Some of the things that you've illustrated, write 40 versions of the thing. Or uh, the person that said, uh, give me the 10 steps to do the thing. It can really show you what you don't know or things uh, that you might miss. It's really good at data analysis too. I found that. But the thing I was going to admit I was going to confess, actually, because I was way out of the gates on AI. And I think it can be really valuable, but it didn't find a home in my daily tech stack, like things I was using every single day. And the admission was, okay, shh, this between us, shh. I canceled the premium chat GPT. 
don't tell. AI is going to get me if they know that I'm not giving them uh, $20 a month. But I found that ChatGPT 4.0 wasn't working as well as it used to. And I know it's all in my head, but I canceled it. And yes, you made a mini course in the Idea Collective. It helped you. That's awesome. I'm glad that we actually did something right. That's fantastic. So I'm looking for those good use cases. Thank you all for sharing. This was a great discussion. Uh, and it's kind of reinvigorating me, right? It's reinvigorating me to find a use case inside chat GPT. Yes, confessions. Should I do that more, Susie? Should I confess more things? Uh, would I have to do it like this? Uh, confessions, things that I just don't want to um, admit on the air. And let's see. I just bought writer because chat GPT. Very cool. All right. Yeah. Let's do one more thing. Uh, is there a program that you're using, a specific program that you're using that is AI powered? Maybe we'll turn someone on to a tool uh, that they haven't used before. Uh, the one that I like to use uh, is Descript. In fact, as a long time editor of Adobe Audition in broadcasting, Descript is really blowing it out of the water for sure. Uh, and yes, uh, Deep Thoughts. <laughs> deep Thoughts by Jack Handy. Absolutely. I think that's hilarious, Gek. That would be a really fun thing for sure. All right. If you've got a tool uh, that you use, uh, drop it in there. But if it's all chat GPT, we are on the same thing. Okay. Can we do some announcements? Because I have some announcements. I, I am in two instances, two instances. I'm putting on real pants and leaving the basement and coming out to see people, which is exciting. And I say that with a smile and a wink because I know I need to do it more. I need to leave the basement. I need to go connect with folks and uh, run for office a little bit. And I get to do it twice. Once this week, uh, coming up, I'm hosting, co-hosting a networking meeting that you're invited to, and it's free. And in September, I'm going to be a speaker at Wendy's conference. So we're going to talk about those two things, and we need to talk about the idea Slamathon. Because if you want to see me get slap happy for charity, bingo. The idea Slamathon is what it's going to be. Okay, first things first. This Thursday, this Thursday, I am going to co-host a networking event. It's the Mashup Networking Event. It's in downtown Milwaukee. It's free to attend five to seven Thursday night. Where is it? Click the link and find out. I'm not going to go through the address and all that kind of stuff. Thursday night, five to seven. It is limited to 75 people. That's it. That's all that can get in, 75 people. And once you're full, you're full. And I think we might have at least half of that registered already. Uh, it's in partnership with some good friends and co-hosts. And the reason why it's called a mashup is that all of us are bringing our networks together so we can meet one another. So Meg Schmidt, uh, the fa franchise fashionista, uh, AFW, my buddy, Andy Wines, co-founder of Young Guns, uh, and Dave McCurg from Petrie and Pettit, uh, that's who's hosting as well. And then all of our good friends of the Idea Collective and the Don't Grow It Alone mission, we're all getting together. And here's the agenda. Show up, meet people, laugh, have fun, go home. That's it. That's all. Come meet people you don't know. Put on real pants. Have a good time. Thursday night, downtown Milwaukee. Would love to see you there if you can make it. And uh, Teresa, you're going to be there? Well, th that's it. You should show up and say hi to Teresa. That's what it is. Meet Teresa Wilmot Thursday night. That should be the lead story. Why don't I just rename that, Teresa? Hey, everyone, listen. Thursday night, meet Teresa Wilmot. That's reason enough to come. And Susie Moon. The Susie Moon will be there. So uh, they've got 40 people already registered. That's exciting. So very cool. Uh, that is Thursday night. Real pants. Real pants saying hello, and I'd love to meet you uh, if you're watching the show and uh, you'd like to get to know one another. So that's exciting. So let me put up the QR code there one more time in case you didn't click it yet. Networking mashup. And I would bet that Susie Moon could drop the chat uh, link in the chat as well in case you don't have time to snap the QR code or catch that in the replay and you can QR, QR the crap out of it. Okay. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm speaking as a VIP 
presenter, our friend Wendy Babcock, who's on the show, she is hosting an event in September called Warrior Unchained Live. This is a women's empowerment and business conference that's talking about more than just women's empowerment and more than just the business side of building a business. Uh, she's been doing this for a few years, getting rave reviews from the folks that are in attendance. And it's got all of the stuff that you need to be a great conference. We're getting away so we can work on our business, not in it, one. Two, surrounded with a positive, abundant group of women who are all going to work together over the weekend. Now, you might be asking yourself, hey, uh, Pat, um, you're uh, a dude. Like, what's going on here? Well, Wendy's uh, a friend, longtime member of the Idea Collective, and she reached out and said, hey, uh, I need a speaker for Friday night, the VIP pre-show. So Friday night is the VIP ticket gets a chance to hang out there. And that pre-event on Friday night, September 22nd, uh, she said, could you come and, and do a thing? I said, yeah, that'd be awesome. So I'm working on exactly what I'm going to do, but I know it's going to include an in-person idea slam. And I make the evil genius fingers because, uh, and that's a thing, evil genius fingers. I'm making the evil genius fingers because I may do a talk and the idea slam. Wendy, I hope that's okay. Because as you've experienced from watching the show, there's a lot more going on up in here than I normally say out loud. So I'm working on a couple of topics that I want to talk about. Uh, and we're going to do an idea slam. And the one and only Susie Moon is going to be doing comedy that night as well, which is pretty darn exciting. So yeah, Wendy, a man at Warrior Unchanged. We are doing crazy things. And not only a man, a man that's in demand, so much in demand that brands are reaching out because they know my fashion sense. I mean, this isn't just some dude. This is a, a, an influencer based on my, what did they say? Um, incredible sense of style and fashion. Not just any man. And yes, this is going to be an epic weekend. And uh, I cannot wait. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you would like to join me, Friday night for the VIP session. And then that weekend, there are 14 speakers lined up, including uh, Alexis Caldicott, who is just next level smart. I mean, just buying the ticket to go see Alexis Caldicott speak is worth it. Like next level above the rim. I shouldn't even be on the same roster with Alexis Caldicott smart. So that's worth the ticket alone is to go see that. So last time, that's the link. Going to take that down here in just one more minute. Okay, so let's talk about the Idea Slamathon. This is going to be so stupid, we have to try it. So to catch you up, we've been raising money for the Islands of Brilliance. We're doing an in-person event with the Savannah Bananas baseball team when they come to town. That's sold out. So we've raised a bunch of money for Islands of Brilliance already. Incredible. Thank you for your donations. Now, between uh, this moment and September 7th, when we party with the bananas, I thought, how else can we raise some money? And I said, okay, I asked my son, who's way smarter than I am, what should we do? And he came up with the Idea Slam-a-thon. We will invite callers on this show. And as a group, all of us will brainstorm for them. 15 minutes you bring up your challenge or your opportunity, or you just come on and tell us about your business. We can just interview you about your business as well, but we're really looking for the idea generation portion. And you say, hey, Pat, um, I really would like to X. Can you help me? And then we'll ask you some smart questions and we'll all brainstorm in the chat. As you can see, if you take the charity part out of it, if you're not an idea collective member, where else can you do that? I mean, in the Idea Collective, we host, host the Idea Slam twice a week. But if you're not an Idea Collective member, which you should be, um, where else can you go and get people that know what they're talking about to take time to help you? It's pretty invaluable. So 
it is a really cool opportunity and it's for a really good cause. The idea is this. We right now have three slots, four slots on sale. And starting third Wednesday morning, the 30th at 9 a.m., we will start with people that donate $50 and we will continue to brainstorm until all of the donations stop. So if you click that link and reserve 9, 915, 930, or 945, it's yours. You'll come on the show at that time and we'll brainstorm for you. Once those four are full, we're going to put four more on sale. If those fill up, we're going to put four more on sale. For those of you that have done brainstorming meetings, imagine a one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour brainstorming meeting. Let's talk about the charity, the Islands of Brilliance. If you don't know the Islands of Brilliance, they are a beautiful organization that help autistic and neurodiverse children find confidence in life skills, primarily through art, but also through socialization. It was started by a family here in Milwaukee for their son. And now it's grown to be this award-winning, getting national grants, like they're really making an impact. And this particular charity has affected my family. And I've seen what they do up close. And it is incredible. When you connect with a kid through their artwork and you make them feel like what they're doing matters and they can make a difference, it's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. So that's why I'm raising money for them. And this is the way we're going to do it. And we would love to have you be a part of it. To participate, click the link, grab your spot. Because once you grab your spot, not only can you tune in and brainstorm with us on August 30th, you can also tune in and watch me crash and burn, which is most certainly going to happen. If you thought you enjoyed me uh, you know, bashing my computer the other week, imagine after an hour or two of brainstorming, what kind of mind putty I'm going to have up here. So let's fill those slots up, raise some money for the Islands of Brilliance, and have a really good time. I'm Pat Miller, the Idea Coach. This has been Small Business Mornings. This is a big old experiment. This show is to test, should we have a daily meeting? I think we should have a daily meeting. I think we should have a conversation to rev you up, to send you out, to go conquer the world as a small business owner. And remember that this show is also in podcast form. So if you can't make it to your browser, or you don't want to be tied to social media every day, when I'm off the air, I send it to the podcast feeds so you can hear it when you walk the dog later or you go do whatever it is that you do. So grab the QR code and you can participate in the Small Business Morning Show wherever you are. Okay, enough procrastination. Let's go get something done. It's time to go small business. I'm Pat Miller, the Idea Coach. Thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of Small Business Mornings. I'll see you tomorrow morning 